Christ is risen. Truly is risen. As we gather together for the Sunday of the myrrh bearers, we see a dichotomy of what is expected in stories and in history. For in the story of our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ, he had 12 friends closer than anyone else, his 12 disciples. These individuals who, when Peter asked, what will we receive, Lord, for we have given up everything, Jesus Christ said of them, they will sit on the 12 thrones of Israel and judge the nations. These are our heroes. These are our protagonists. These are the men. And yet, when our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ was betrayed and hung upon the cross, all but one of them vanished. They ran away. Strike the face of the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. So it is not the disciples who go to Pontius Pilate and ask for the body. It is someone that is seeking the kingdom of God, Joseph of Arimathea. And who does he call to help him but someone that had been afraid to see Jesus Christ in the daytime, Nicodemus, Nicodemus who was well respected on the council, but now he wants to be seen as a disciple of Christ. My beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, who are the ones that courageously go to the tomb? It is not the disciples. It is the myrrh-bearing women the women of the company of Jesus Christ. It shows us, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, that these people that we don't expect much of in the story, that seem to be background characters, incidental characters in the story, are perhaps the most important. For you see, my beloved brothers and sisters, they are doing what should be done. And they are not seeking glory. They are not seeking accolades. They are not seeking to be recognized for what they are doing. They only want to do what is right by their Lord and God and Savior. They want to wash his body with myrrh. What does this teach us, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ? It teaches us the humble, ascetical, way of salvation. These are the people that we ought to emulate. People that are not seeking glory or riches or accolades, but just to be with their God. This is antithetical to the way the world operates. The world wants us to put ourselves front and center, that we must be the center of attention, and we must devour all people's attention. If I do a good deed, then I must make sure that the entire world hears about it. My beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, this is not the way of the myrrh-bearers. So what is the way of the myrrh-bearers? In the Gospel passage, when the myrrh-bearers came to the tomb and found the two angels, the two angels instructed them, Go to Galilee. There you will see Jesus as he directed you and told you. Go and tell the disciples and Peter that he is risen. And the gospel passage ends saying, And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now, a first glance hearing of that might sound as if to say, They were frightened women, so they went home scared and didn't say anything to anyone. No, that's not what happened. They went and told the disciples. 
It says in the scriptures that this wor- these words seemed like an idle tale to them. They didn't want to believe the women who had heard that the Lord was risen. So what does this mean? And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. It means they didn't go dilly-dallying from place to place. They didn't say, well, let me stop by the market first. Let me go see my cousin first. They said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Because of that fear, that phobia, they went straight to where they were meant to go. Direct to tell people about the risen Lord. That, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, is what we are tasked to do. This is one of the reasons why during this 40-day period we greet one another with the term Christos Anesti, Christ is risen, because we are declaring it to all people because we're in darkness and now we're in light. They were lost and now they're found. Our God died on the cross for them and rose from the dead. So my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, let us be like Joseph of Arimathea. Let us be like Nicodemus. Let us be like the myrrh-bearing women, quiet followers of Christ. Because I tell you, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, even if the world doesn't see it, the Lord does. And those small tasks, those small things done almost in secret, cause the greatest good and the most powerful consequence to the world. Many times we see the good things that happen in our churches and in our world. We think that this was because of some great statesman. This was because of some great leader. No. Most of the time, it was because one individual said, I want to do something good. And he or she does the good work and doesn't want anyone to know. And people just see the good work and think, this is wonderful, this is glorious, how wonderful that we've done this. And that person that's quietly in the shadows, in the shadow of our Lord and God, God sees them, God recognizes them. Let us go and do likewise, my beloved brothers and sisters.